guys that was in nine, I think halfway through the third quarter, I think they ended on a 17 to four run um, to end the third quarter. Mm -hmm. What, um, you know, what, what flipped there? Well, when you give up 48 in the first quarter, get down by 20, by as many as 30 at one point, uh, you expend so much energy trying to get back into the game. Uh, and, and so it was great to see our guys continue to fight, compete, uh, and not just to roll over, you know, but you can't allow a team to you know, come out and, and play the way they did in that first quarter. Um, they shot, I think, 77 from the field. They made seven of eight threes in that quarter. Um, it just didn't feel us. After that, uh, much better. But you know, I just told our guys, we've lost four in a row. Uh, losing sucks. It should hurt. You should be angry. You should be frustrated. You should be embarrassed, whatever it is. Um, and we, we can't wait for Jamal, Michael, and Nicole to come back. We have to fix it. And, uh, you know, we can only do that by staying together um, and, and having a positive mindset, even in light of four losses. And, and, I, and I liked how we competed. Um, but after we cut it to nine, to your point, 17 to four, and then it kind of got away from us once again. You said they didn't feel you. Um, was it the physicality that, that was just lacking in the first quarter? Like, what could you have done to stem that 48 point? Quarter. Yeah, they, when I say they didn't feel us, I think we had two deflections in the first quarter. Uh, they were running script offense. They got whatever they wanted. It was too clean, too smooth. Um, and we didn't make them feel us, so we didn't make them work for it. After that, I thought it was pretty good. I mean, uh, 25, 27, and 26 points in the quarters after that. You know, But once again, a team that's won 11 in a row, um, you don't want to spot anybody 30 points uh, and allow them to get into that comfort zone. Um, and obviously we continue to struggle to make shots and, uh, you know, that's going to make it really hard for you to, you know, cut that nine point deficit to even lower because, you know, we just were struggling to see that ball go in. Is there any remedy to miss shots? I mean, or is it just, you gotta just generate the good ones and hope they go in? Yeah. I don't, I don't know what else we can do. I mean, it's, it's a matter of, you know, like Will said, he goes, man, it's not my night tonight. You know, he's been so great for us, 4 of 15, 0 for 4. Wasn't like he was trying to miss shots. You know, so as long as we're taking good ones, Chris, um, I encourage our guys to stay aggressive, stay confident. Uh, we got to the foul line 28 times tonight, uh, which to me shows aggression, not just settling. Um, but, you know, this not making shots wasn't just tonight. It's been a season-long thing, as we know. And uh, we just got to uh, stay with it. Coming out of the halftime, son, you talking uh, with Natalie Sabo and Aaron as well. Could you could you sense his frustration building throughout the night? Well, yeah, we, we were talking to Natalie uh, after the half because I told her to look at a play where we had Aaron roll into the basket, and I felt he got fouled. Aaron felt he got fouled, and he didn't get the call. And to Natalie's credit, she watched it at half and said, "You guys are a thousand percent right. I missed it. He didn't get fouled. He should have been shooting free throws." Um, and I think probably from there, it, it just kind of built. Uh, I thought Jamaica Green did a great job trying to get Aaron away from her. And that was my question to her is, you know, he, he was being escorted away. I understand the first tech, but, uh, you know, she felt he deserved the other one. And, you know, they tossed him, and which is tough when you're down as many bodies as we are. You know, we just can't afford to do that. And uh, do you have an update on uh, Bones, how he's doing? I think he's all right. It was, uh, I think, a, a different ankle. You know, so obviously, uh, we got to make sure he's wearing braces or getting taped or something because his ankles last couple of games have uh, been taking a hit. And again, I, you know, that five game homestand that we had, you know, Bones was outstanding. I mean, he, he was just that, that ball of energy off the bench, scoring, playmaking. And uh, obviously, we missed that. So hopefully, we can get him healthy uh, and get him back out there. Jeff Green, I think 19 points for Jeff Green. Um, what did you see out of him today? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I feel bad, you know, for a guy that's been in the league 15 years, you know, playing him as many minutes as I'm playing him right now. But because we're undermanned, it uh, kind of calls for that. Um, but, you know, just, you know, playing the game, being aggressive. He got to the foul line eight times. Uh, and I think when we beat them here the first time, you know, to start the year, he was really effective from the three-point line. Stretch their defense, their bigs are down the floor. Um, and what I love about it is if your three is not working, well, look to attack the basket, get to the foul line, see that ball go through. Uh, so I just thought that Jeff had a really aggressive mindset uh, and played a very efficient 30 minutes for us. You know, do you have a reference point for everything that's happening with the team right now, injury-wise and 
shooting not being where you want to be. Is, has, have you been through a stretch like this before at some other time? Oh, sure. I mean, when you're been in the league as long as I've been in the league and seven years in Denver, um, you know, losing, going through a losing streak four games in a row is hard. Um, so, yeah, I've been through it. Um, but I think it's also my job as a leader of this team is to help us guide, guide us through that. You know, and, and I challenged myself tonight throughout the game, even when it was getting ugly, uh, to stay positive uh, and, and to be somebody that was bringing guys together and not allowing them to split and fall apart and give in. Uh, and we're going to do that in Portland. You know, I mean, that, that's our challenge. Division opponent, we just beat them at home. Lillard had a great game last game. It's going to be a hell of a challenge going in there and trying to get a division win. But if we stay together and we keep on battling and competing, the tide will turn. I have no doubt about that, Chris. Can't control missing shots. You can't control your effort. Uh, and we just have to have a sense of desperation about us, like any team that's lost four in a row should. Speaking of uh, guys, someone not letting you guys split apart, uh, Nicola seemed super engaged last game. He also seemed engaged this game, uh, coaching almost from the sidelines. Can you sense that? Um, and do you hear him in those levels? You know, uh, sometimes I, I do, sometimes I don't. Uh, but I just I just challenge all of our guys, including Jamal and Nicola. Uh, you know, Michael obviously is down in Florida. Um, he's away from the team at the moment. But um, whether you're playing or not playing, you have to, uh, an obligation to your teammates to bring some positive energy. Help us along. And Nicola and Jamal, even though they're not playing at the moment, uh, their voice, their presence, their energy is so impactful. So from the, Nicola is in the huddle, engaging, talking, um, demanding, then that, that, that's great because he's a leader of our team, whether he's playing or not playing, and he needs to do that. He needs to own that responsibility. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, everybody.